So what do I think that Brian Koberger's play is here with bringing Bethany in as a witness? Let's not forget that Brian has a PhD in criminology and a master's in criminal justice. And with his life on the line, he's definitely going to try and make some plays here. If he's heard everything in the theories like we all have, he probably knows the stuff about Dylan and that she's going to be used as a witness against him. Now remember, they have all the evidence. They have everything that we don't know. So Brian might be trying to use Bethany as a tool to get Dylan discredited as a witness by saying that Bethany knows that Dylan was drunk that night and that impairs her as a credible witness. Or if Bethany heard or saw something, why is it that she didn't help? So if we go ahead and we take a look at number nine here, it says that Bethany Funk was interviewed by police on several occasions and she disclosed things that she heard and things she saw. And because of what she heard and saw, this is exculpatory to the defendant. Now, I don't think Bethany saw anything. I think Bethany heard something and that was coming from the room above her. I don't think she heard what happened on the third floor. I think she heard the altercation of what happened to Ethan and Zana. Because this loud FUD was even picked up as a distorted audio from what sounded like voices or a whimper that's followed by a loud FUD. Now, I believe that this was Zana's body actually hitting the floor. It's been noted that Zana had defensive wounds. And if Ethan was found laying in the bed, he may have been asleep. Zana may have just been up on her foot. Brian would have entered at that point and taken Ethan out first, giving Zana some of a chance to try and defend him. That's when he would have hit her with a crucial shot that dropped her to the floor. And I'm assuming that after this, there was no noise coming from that room because it says that DM stated that she opened her door for the third time after she heard the crying, not whilst the crying was continuing because she opened her door for the second time when she thought she heard what was crying coming from Canodal's room. And if Bethany down below Zanna and Ethan's room was able to hear this loud thud, maybe she texted Dylan to ask, have you heard the noise or what's going on upstairs? Because it's the combination of these statements to law enforcement, as well as downloads of records from Funk and Mortison's phone. This combined with the audio from next door is what gave police the indication of what times these murders occurred. And I've wondered why if Bethany texts Dylan to ask what was going on and what the noise was, didn't Dylan go out and check? But the affidavit also states that Dylan went ahead after seeing him for the third time and locked herself in her room. Something else that was picked up was by this creator and I will tag her below. But she notes that on Reddit, people have been talking about the fact that they heard running water. Meaning that after Brian attacked Zanna and Ethan, he went ahead into the bathroom and he actually washed himself or his knife or he took the towel and he wrapped the knife in it before leaving as well as maybe wiping his shoes down, hence why there wasn't much prints. So this does open the theory as to why the survivors didn't go ahead and do anything. But this is one of those theories where you have to suggest this is a household where they're used to hearing loud noises all the time. Maybe they just think that the party's still ongoing from the people that have come back. They've seen the state of the people because they're the ones that have confirmed them coming back from the parties. Maybe they know that they were drunk or impaired or they're drunk or impaired themselves and they just were thinking, ah, oh, we'll deal with it tomorrow morning. Not thinking a stranger is in their house murdering their friends. 